thankful to the organizers that uh, they have given me an opportunity to present my research work. Basically, we are doing some research work in our country also. Uh, most of the work is going on abroad, but now in India also we have started work on terrors. Because you see that for automation you require very uh, communication which should be on real time, no delay, because so that the automation can be perfect. And similarly for production also there are a lot of inspection which can be of a perfect nature, so that the quality of our product should be very high. And uh, because you know that the cost of uh, any electric vehicle, as well as the performance, life, weight, etc., totally depend on the battery quality. So everything can be improved if we, remove, if we improve the quality of the production of our product using this uh, tower devices. That is possible. Now next. Uh, outline of my chart is first uh, what is terahertz, uh, and then use of uh, terahertz for EV automation that required because of the we want low latency, no delay of our detection, and then we have a high data when the vehicles will increase, you have a more data requirement to communicate, and then small size of that is also important because you know that the, any antenna size, any transmitter, receiver, etc., that totally depend on the wavelength. Well, presently we are using low frequency around 6 gigahertz, but now we will go very high frequency, yes, so that the size will become in nanometers. And then for the production of EV batteries, we want very good quality control, automation, everything in automation, and perfection, everything should be there, so that our quality of the EV batteries should be very high. And then conclusion. So as I told you that the terahertz is basically an electromagnetic wave, and it started uh, presently, as you know, that what frequency we are using for mobile communication is up to 6 gigahertz only. And now at uh, 5 NR, if you know it, we are working up to 100 gigahertz. But at terahertz frequency, we will go further higher, and uh, we are going for much higher communication, we are using fiber optics communication, but there we require fiber optics, but for wireless communication, you want that it should be, frequency should be higher and higher possible. So, uh, the sterile bank is fortunately lying between the uh, over this uh, microwave and the optical region, and it takes the advantage of both the things. It takes the advantage of microwave in the sense that you can carry large amount of data wirelessly, and on the other hand, from the optical side, it has the advantage that it no, you need not to require any fiber optics. That is the thing. So earlier, few years back, 20 years back, it was nobody was working. But now all sectors, not only EV sector, but defense, space. Agriculture, medicine, every sector of which you know is now started working on terahertz. So it becomes a terahertz rush. And similarly, our electric vehicle people also started using this terahertz for their applications. So you will find a lot of uh, information about this now in uh, our website. Uh, some of the things I will tell you that, uh, as I told you, that because of strength has been gone up. So you can carry large amount of data from one place to another. Similarly, you will have a very faster rate of communication. It will come down from millisecond to nanosecond. So everything will be real, real time instruction. As small size of component, our component will be in nanoscale. And you will have a higher safety. That is also important. Your communication skills will be more. And everything is possible to chip. You can create and put on your vehicle. So, uh, your channel capacity is going increasing with the frequency, as you see. And God has provided us with windows. You see, we are the atmospheric windows where the attenuation is low at this point. And uh, where we are using now this uh, shaded, circular shaded region is now being explored. This is 200 to 300 gigahertz. is now being explored by various communities. Even our EV community has started using this for their purpose. Now, attenuation is a problem, certainly. As you increase the frequency, your atmospheric attenuation is increasing. But when you want a smaller distance, then it is very good. So uh, we, have, uh, we have some windows here where we are working and using it for our different purposes. 
So for 60, now that is because Patanjali, we are in IoT, we are using 5G part. Um, most of the communication is going on. And 5G, we have started working up to 100 gigahertz. We are looking for, but for 6G, we will go from uh, more than 100 gigahertz. We will go from 200 to 300 gigahertz, as I told you. And this is just an example that at 28 gigahertz, if you use your antenna size, will be of 100 millimeter square, whereas if I use 140 gigahertz, then the, my antenna array size will come down to 25 millimeter square, just very much come down, whereas you can see that the channel bandwidth will be significantly high, and similar data rate will go from 1.6 gigabits per second to 13 gigabits per second, you can tremendously increase, so everything will be possible, and similarly your data communication rate, everything will be come down. So this is uh, uh, our communication going from 5G and it will go 6G after 25 and uh, up to 5G uh, and up to 25 we are getting, as you have seen few presentations, they have talked about V2G, V2X, so in V2X they are able to communicate from out around, but fully automation we are expecting by 2030 we have used terahertz frequency where we can do the complete automation in safer, com uh, safer, com safer automation experience. And this is a 4D radar, which is, uh, I don't know, somebody has not presented, but this work has been tremendously done uh, for the better communication with our electric vehicle. It's a 4D, we can see every surrounding. Uh, we are presently we are using up to millimeter waves, but uh, a few years after few years we will go to some millimeter waves at terahertz frequency. Then our uh, the capability through the vehicle will become very much. We will have no accident, fully automation, fully reliability will be there. And uh, this is the slide showing that uh, certainly we are working on the towards the. Uh, the uh, part that is going on since long back, but by uh, 2030 we are expecting that our vehicle can see all around, can take on all decisions and can have more uh, collision, etc., etc. It can take, and moreover, it can, we have started working on wireless charging. Presently, we are doing it with lower frequency. Uh, I don't know whether it, we are doing it in India, but abroad they have started doing wireless charging. That is a very important aspect, actually. So, but uh, after a few years, uh, we will have a complete automation, and that could be possible by using the terahertz frequency. Now, next part is, uh, so uh, this is you already know, we have a Bharat Fiji Alliance. We have many industries, many government organizations, many institutions that are collaborating and working towards the use of terahertz frequency for the other application. And ISC has so, uh, so, uh, developed one B2S technology at, uh, but lower frequency, they have done around 28 gigahertz, but a uh, few years back, after some years, we will certainly take up terahertz frequency towards this automation. Now coming to the next part, that is terahertz frequency for production of VB battery. Terahertz frequency has a number of advantages, as I told you, we have a unique property. Uh, that is strong absorption in water-based material, and then transparency for numerous materials. You can use non-invasive probes. Then it has the correspondence to many molecular absorption lines. You can detect all quality of your organic compound which are using in your lithium ion battery uh, for cathode fabrication and anode fabrication, etc. Then uh, the terrain is spectroscopy. It will give you high sensitivity for chemical changes in organic molecules. And moreover, uh, terahertz energy levels are not high. And presently, we are using X-rays uh, and ultraviolet for detection and industrial action. But when you replace X-ray and ultraviolet by terahertz, you will have a safer uh, working, no, uh, no cancer and etc. Cetera, et cetera is there. Well, this is just uh, terrain spectroscopy analysis to the organic compound which we are using in lithium ion batteries, etc. We can see the quality. We will get the 
We are an imaginary part of our, whatever coating we will do on our cathodes and on, our, on the lithium-ion battery and can see the quality and the purity of what we are doing with that. So the life of our battery will significantly increase. And it will be a, uh, a fast, measurement will become fast and contact with measurement is there. Whatever we are doing in a few seconds, it will come down to much less than millisecond. And so that you can increase the production efficiency and reduce the wastage. Mm -hmm. So your battery cost will come down. So uh, as I told you that uh, presently we are using X-ray and ultraviolet for our industrial application for quality control and detection and seeing the thickness measurements, uh, uh, etc., etc. Uh, well, the charge, the frequency, as you know, the energy of any wave is a product of frequency material plan constant, HDU. So when we compare uh, our T wave against X-ray, then you see that the energy of uh, T wave is uh, much less than 40 milli electron volt, where it, in X-ray it will come more than 100,000. So X-ray is very, very harmful. So T wave has no harmful ionization effect owing to its low photon energy. And it is very, very useful for our industrial application due to non-destructive and safe operation. And that is why Terra's technology, uh, now in abroad they have started, uh, some companies, they have started using this Terra uh, for the production, especially the lithium and battery. They are using the T-ray sensing for improved quality control, T-ray sensing for high precision measurement, so that it will become the where it is very popular, useful and highly economical, reliable and fast, which makes our battery uh, uh, low cost, highly efficient, and long, very, very long life and high reliability. And the weight also can come down because you know that the weight of your vehicle will also depend on the battery. So if you can bring down the battery weight, your weight of your vehicle will come down. That is a very important aspect. <coughs> So the cathode and you know, they are very critical. It's not a simple structure, it's a complex structure is there so that lithium ions can go and charge uh, easily and efficiently also. Uh, uh, and everything should be fast. Charging should be fast. That also we have to see it. So that is also possible when you do a special type of uh, coating, you take a special precaution in coating, etc. So that could be possible by you, when we use Terra for all our work. So uh, for lithium ion battery, uh, we have uh, uh, production challenges that uh, manufacturer should make the electrode coating on cathodes and anode uh, perfectly so that it can optimize uh, our whole lithium ion battery capacity in all respects. So uh, key performance indicator is the coating density which we make, then coating thickness and what should be conducted. And by using the Terra sensors, we can do all these measurements uh, without any uh, contact, etc. And should be, we can make it very fast and without uh, any, uh, any harmful effect on the operator. So the Terra advantage is that it offers prospect of high performance electrode coating delivered at lower cost and with much high reliability and much longer life. So the, we have a requirement on cathodes, uh, various, uh, just few points I have written. Similarly, uh, an anode requirement because everything will depend on cathode and anode what we are using. So, uh, we have to optimize everything. And moreover, you see that by using single terahertz pulse, you can carry out a number of measurements. A single pulse on a spectroscopy, you pass a terahertz pulse on your cathode, whatever coating, etc., which you have made. And you can see that you can get multiple pulses you will come, which you can detect and see the, what type of uh, coating and the average performance uh, has been done on that. So everything has become fast. So this is just a comparison of Terra's uh, 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 sensing, sensing compared to other methods which are using like uh, X-rays and uh, millimeter waves. Uh, so you see that uh, the first line uh, 
that is for the terror it gives all the advantage of 11 advantage i have told that says for human body non contact multiple layer measurement density measurement high speed compositional instantity temperature means every advantage you are getting by using terror measurement by other methods like x ray will give you only few advantages infrared and they are giving so that is the terror that is normal advantage you get but the main challenge <laughs> for all this thing is a source terror source there is rigorous research work is going on fertility is going on in our country also uh, to produce a uh, highly high economical efficient source for that purpose so that uh, we can get the terror for our different application <coughs> so the many technology has been adopted you have to see a source which is very compact uh, efficient uh, and have a long life So different approaches have been followed by scientists. Uh, fortunately, we are also working in our country here. Ultimately, I conclude my talk that terror technology is a very emerging technology for EV automation and for production of our EV vehicles. And R&D activities are going on even in our country also. We have started working on uh, making terror active and passive components devices. Then there is technology for production of our lithium ion batteries. Then also we have started looking for this AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning processes for our different applications. And the metamaterial graphene, this is new, uh, better because it is better than uh, your lithium ion batteries. On that also people have started working. And many institutes have started collaborating in our country also uh, to achieve the EV automation and. e battery production with that i thank you once again uh, everybody i am extremely thankful to the organizer also for giving me an opportunity and i request you that because it is a research area presently we have started no doubt in india also we have started working because many institutes are working even in bengal also many defense lab iisc they are working on terra also i am not a very i am also working uh, but uh, not directly involved in any institute it's my own work and most of the information you can easily find on the website but if you have any particular query, query on this aspect i will be very happy that if you write to me on my email address yes you are gmail.com thank you very much thanks again